Hi there, I'm Grant George, voice actor. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, sure. All right. Um, known for a couple things that are running right now, like Fate Zero, playing Lancer and that. Nura, Knight of the something or other, as Knight Rikyo, and um, a show called K, and another one called Zet Man, where I'm playing Koga and Alphas. Plus a bunch of other stuff like that keeps running Bleach and and uh, Naruto. Um, I asked earlier in a previous interview, what is your hobby? My hobby. Uh, my hobby right now. I do graphic design as a hobby. I sometimes will edit some of my own work and use it as a demo. Um, outside of voice acting, I do a lot of things like. Um, I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I just bought this old craftsman house in, in my city of Glendale, in Los Angeles, and a uh, hundred-year-old house. It's got a lot of work that's got to be done to it. Uh, the 60s got a hold of it and barked in the, in the kitchen and in the bathroom, so they're nasty, so I've been tearing stuff out and learning how to do things myself. Um, building a new studio in there, which is where I do most of my work, and uh, then on my free time, I like to hike, I like to kayak. I like to go explore and go on adventures. Um, what would you do if you were not a voice actor? Hmm, if I was not a voice actor, I... Wow, that's a good question. I think I would uh, <laughs> I'd be out in the world doing volunteer work if I could. Just uh, traveling, you know, trying to make different, make things happen, make things better in the world. Probably teaching, probably go around teaching people on how to transform their lives and create the, the life that they dreamt of so it becomes reality for them. Uh, teaching kids, probably be an author of some sort, teaching kids how to, how to create the life they want to and have fun doing it. Um, now, what is your alcoholic beverage of choice? My alcoholic beverage of choice is, I'm pretty easy, I think maybe it's just a vodka martini. Um, I'm not a big wine drinker anymore, I'm, <laughs> I think MD2020 ruined that for me. Uh, I'm say Thunderbird is some good stuff, and um, uh, Boone's, no. Uh, I think my best, it's just a vodka martini probably, or just like a nice ale, like an IPA, something, something good. Now, uh, I, I know that this is your first con, and how is it going for you? Uh, Mythicon, this is my first con. I'm glad to be here. It went really cool. I think it was better to kind of come in on a, on a first con and be broken in gently, I guess. I was a little worried that people were going to know more about the shows than I do, so it was nice to be able to um, meet people for the first time, some of the people that I've connected with through social media and have them be here and, and meet me. and It's interesting, I think one of the things that I've learned is that some of the shows that I thought were going to be popular or some of the games that I've done that I thought would be popular, people have no idea what the heck they are. So they're actually bringing me things to sign that are I didn't even know people knew about. One of the most popular ones was like Shinjiro in, in Persona 3 and Persona 4 and 2 and all those numbers. Um, I had no idea that that was such a big game or that so many people liked it. Maybe it's a Florida thing, I don't know. But cons have been fun. It's been fun to, to connect with the people and I've heard some really cool stories. One person shared a very personal story with me that you know some of the things that we've been working on as voice actors have had such a good impact that it actually got her through some really serious illness and two times. So it's nice to know that the work I'm doing has an impact on people and, and they're watching and it makes a difference. What is one of the most quirky things you do in the booth? I am known in the booth to <laughs> go in there and turn off all the lights and it kind of throws people off because they're used to being able to talk to me through the glass. And But my thing is I just want to lock into the character. If it's a spooky thing that I'm working on, if it's uh, an action thing, I want to be there. I want to lock in as an actor and I don't really like to be watched while I'm working. So, you know, I'll go in there, I'll put on my headphones, I'll turn off the lights and just have the light that's on my um, the stand with the, well now they use a lot of iPad stuff so it's all, you know, with the iPad I don't have to turn on light and uh, just go for it. 
I think the quirkiest stuff that happens in the booth is um, there's a person named Mona Marshall who's notorious for drawing horses and uh, male anatomy on scripts and people with big lips kissing God knows what and so you know all of us go in there and add on to those doodles and you know add butts to the lips and, and other things that probably we can't talk about on here depending on its rating but uh, that's about the most of it. We'll leave little notes for somebody if we know somebody else is coming to the booth. Like if I know Sam's coming in there, I'll leave him a little note, and, yeah, so that either you're whatever. We've left notes for uh, Stephanie Shea, and there's certain people that get ha haggard, um, haggled, hassled, hassled quite often. I know with with fans, um, you're gonna, you know, be if you can I plan on getting comms. Yeah, I'm sure. With this experience, you probably will. <laughs> yeah. Um, with fans, you're gonna hear, you know, you're gonna hear a lot of, you know, cool stories and interesting, you know, uh, retrospect and in, into what you do as a voice actor and and to hear, you know, how much they loved your game or what the anime that you're in or you know, yeah. whatever else. How does that impact you? It's interesting to hear what people like. Like, for example, I was doing a panel the other day and uh, this guy came in and he was a Keelik fan from Soul Calibur. I mean, he knew that character more than any, probably even the makers of the game. He came in and he was just, you know, bam, bam, oh, you know, Keelik's the best because he's a monk and he does his meditation and he has his two staff and the staff actually has a voice. I mean, he just, he knew everything. So it was clear that this was the character that he always plays with. And it's cool because that's like, and that's happened with a couple of different games at this con that uh, you know people say I always choose your character or I played with your character before and it's it's cool to hear that to know that what we're doing is is become somebody's favorite thing and you know we would hope that it would have some kind of positive impact in their life but you know even if it's just escapism I, there's so much going on in the world right now that it's it's nice just to kind of get away and just have some entertainment and just you know play and if that means you know people can feel like a hero and your voice is the one that is part of that hero that's awesome it's good to be a part of people's lives that way that's what I grew up with I grew up with you know, watching superheroes and uh, I just knew I wanted to be a part of that magic I wanted to be a part of those voices and 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 be a part of kids childhoods too you know knowing that I'll never forget all the shows that I watched as a kid and the heroes that were important to me so that's that will carry through my entire lifetime as important to my childhood. So to be a part of other people's childhood, even some of the people here where the childhood continues into their 30s and 40s and sometimes 50s, it's cool. It's, just, it's, it's great to be a part of that and kind of leave my mark on this earth in some way.